Welcome to Diggers and Dozers Live. I'm your host Mark Anthony and today we're going to be talking about trailers. In many ways trailers are the unsung heroes of the plant sector. Now we all like to waffle on about the dig depth of a mini excavator or the compaction capabilities of a roller. But without a trailer, a decent trailer, both of those items of equipment and so much more is just stranded. And we're going to be talking about a brand new trailer. But before we start, let's take a look at it in action. delighted to be joined by Steve Bradshaw of ATE, the company behind that brand new trailer. Now Steve, you've chosen to bring a brand new trailer to market in the midst of a global pandemic. I guess my first question is why, and probably more specifically, why now? Thanks for the, the great introduction. Um, it's uh, really just the, the culmination of, of two years worth of um, research, development, feedback from customers, uh, putting the product to the test, reinventing it, um, and constantly working to to evolve this product to to something that we're uh, happy to put to market. And and we've got to that point now. Um, and we've got people actually asking us to launch this trailer because they they want it. Um, and you've mentioned just now about safety, and and that is really the heart of this product. This product has been um, developed through. Um, to overcome, I guess, the challenges that fleet operators, fleet managers, and, and these guys that have responsibility to make sure that what is out on the road is safe and fit for purpose. And, and that's becoming, you know, right and center of, of their remit now. Uh, no longer is it acceptable just to put something out there because it does a job. Um, they need to make sure they're getting return on investment. They need to make sure they've got um, full fleet utilization because let's face it challenges like this current pandemic mean that we've got to operate more efficiently and we can't have you know um, burnt up profit in our organizations we need to make sure that it's it's earning the pennies that it's, it's meant to and and so that's that's why we brought this product to market I mean the modular design you mentioned and touched on earlier um, that's really just a uh, uh, come from a childhood memories, if you like, of playing with Meccano um, and um, wanting to just um, put things together, take them to bits, make them again into something different. Um, and it's all about keeping our products relevant today without the cost, if you like, of building bespoke products. Because bespoke products do cost money and, and we all understand that and often that's prohibitive of, of going forward with something that um, we might want but can't have. Now your new trailer is modular, which means it's configurable to specific customer needs, but it also makes a big contribution to minimizing downtime as well. Is that a reflection of your company's background in the spare parts business? Absolutely. So um, as you mentioned, the, the cost of the whole life cost of, of a piece of equipment is, is an important consideration now. It's all very well maybe getting something with a, a low upfront cost, but it costs a fortune to maintain and repair if you can. Um, and You've rightly pointed out that as, as a business, ATE was started to supply spares and components into the, the plant hire, the um, utilities market, and the, the contractors that support those markets. Uh, and so we built up 25 years of experience of distributing spares for everybody else. Um, and the, the need of getting spares quickly, uh, we fully understand that downtime is a real cost in businesses and if they don't have equipment to to uh, to help move and do the work they need to do that that has a, an impact on their relations with their customers and in turn that affects their profitability so um 
getting stuff to site quickly when it does break or when it needs a repair is absolutely vital and being able to change those parts quickly is also essential um, and to be, have the option to change um, as many sensibly possible parts um, is, is also essential so that um, you know you don't write off the trailer when it isn't actually necessary. Now, I understand you've been on a bit of a testing tour recently, pitting your new trailer against various types of equipment, as we saw in that video. So how did the trailer perform? Absolutely. And to be honest, it wasn't the first test it's been on, but it was a, it was a great test to try a range of different bits of equipment um, from the Dyna Pack roller. Uh, the double twin roller, which is a, a kit, piece of kit that's often used in the utilities market, um, to see that operate and smoothly negotiate the ramp, which is often a big issue with rollers. They do tend to slip and skid um, on ramps. Ours, uh, with a high grip surface, that just smoothly um, it moved up that ramp into the trailer. And to be honest, the operator slowed down halfway. And I had a bit of that heart, you know, bit missed the heartbeat when. Um, I thought, oh no, it's going to sit there and spin. And of course, no, just smoothly went up. So that was great. And then to obviously move to Flannery, uh, where we obviously tested uh, out the equipment again. And that was a great day. Um, just uh, Flannery, the well-known brand, and they run lots of earth moving equipment. I have great experience and it was good to have uh, the opportunity to, to let them try um, the trailer. And there was great feedback from that. And then finally, um, to touch on market leading equipment, battery powered diggers um, being used on our trailer uh, was uh, again one of those things that um, it, it was just the top stone, if you like, of being up there with such innovative products and the two together link, you know, innovation breeds innovation. Um, and to, to get those two, two products, our product, the Rhino TXDP trailer with the, um, the uh, Wackenhusen electric digger. Uh, was was a great great experience. And my understanding is the trailer currently comes in two forms. There's the basic version, and what I guess Donald Trump would probably describe as the super duper version. Tell me more. There were there were two trailers, and and one was sort of not really recognisable to the other. But actually, believe it or not, they were both based on exactly the same um, basic trailer. Uh, obviously, the basic one had uh, did have an option on it, which was the filled in. Uh, ramp on the back but apart from that it was pretty much what you'd expect to get um, but the other one as you rightly say was the souped up uh, version and that had pretty much every single feature on it um, that you could purchase so it had the the breaker store and bucket rest uh, it had the bucket lockers on it uh, it had the digger system it had the pivot axle system it had the upgraded wheels and tires it had the serrated jockey wheel and it had the full double angle loading ramp which is 1.7 meters high um so yeah it, it had absolutely everything it was the all singing all dancing version now youtube is filled with videos of men and machines falling off of trailers but it's very clear that you put safety at the very forefront of your design take me through that so slips trips and falls while mounting a, a um a trailer to gain access to the digger is is a big risk and, and it's a risk in any building site environment um and as you say, there's always things that work against us. You've got wet surfaces, you've got uh, muddy boots, you've got muddy tracks, um, and all these things don't help. Um, so what we try to do is, um, or what we have done, should I say, is we've incorporated steps um, with anti-slip surfaces so that the mud can fall through. Um, we've also created an anti-slip surface on top of the mud guard, and we've also got a step that covers the tracks so that you don't get um, any unnecessary soil onto the, the bottom of your boots um, so effectively you've got a clean access or clean path of access to the digger um, and in doing so you can also maintain three points of contact um, at, at every stage so that you never um, have that risk where something could go wrong looking at the design it's very clear that you've also put the operator front and center of your design thoughts as well explain that to me Manual handling is a big risk on all sites um, and particularly lifting heavy ramps is, is one of those things and typically um, you end up having two operators to safely lift the ramp and even then it's uh, you know if someone is not really paying attention if it falls um, it's a very heavy object to land on someone. Um, so what we've incorporated is is some gas assistance um, so they're 
basically some gas str struts which are mounted horizontally under the floor so they actually um are tucked nicely out of the way to avoid being damaged but also because of the way they're set up they actually do um, help lift the tailgate um, and also they obviously restrain it as it lowers so you could actually um it, you could say this is a truly one-man operation uh, when it comes to raising and lowering the ramp, which it does is another key benefit because it means that the operator can be utilised on something else, uh, whilst one of them is is loading and uh, securing the ramp. Um, so again, more efficiencies, more more savings in terms of our overhead costs. Now, at the time of recording, we're starting to see shorter days and darker afternoons as we head into autumn and then ultimately into winter. But your new trailer includes some really state-of-the-art lighting to overcome that. Tell me more about that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, lighting is, is such, a, such an important thing and you can't be on the road without your lights. Um, but so often with bulb lights, um, you'll know, you get cool out because the lights don't work and, and, and rightly so. But the cost of that for the sake of a bulb um, is, is horrendous, really, when you think about it. And often it's just a by mistake situation where someone's hitched up to a 200 a 240 volt sorry a 24 volt lorry um and the trailer's only set up for 12 volt and then the bulbs blow and the operator may not necessarily realize that at the time um and and they go down the road and, and they've got no lights so you get called out for the sake of a few bulbs so what we've decided to do as standard is fit dual voltage led lights across the entire trailer so everything is is um totally reliable um, and also you have the peace of mind that doesn't matter what vehicle you hitch up to it the lights will always work and obviously the the intensity of led lights is great as well so there's no question of about being seen when you're on the road with the lights on um, and as you say approaching winter time that's that's essential another thing that we're just uh, working on and will become available shortly is led bed lights and so what that does is that, that actually illuminates the bed of the trailer um, whilst you're loading it um, and then the, the lights then switch off when the, the tailgate is raised um, and all of the steps are also illuminated so um, again in those dark evenings dark nights when the operators run the risk of accidentally missing a, their footing um, all of this lighting helps support that. Now I've personally followed some horror shows up and down the motorways here in the UK of trailers that are all over the road and very very unstable but you've addressed that as well. Explain exactly how you've gone about that. So we've incorporated the a pivot axle system into our design, uh, which means that all four wheels maintain contact with the road surface at all times. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you're going up a curb, whether you're going over a speed hump, um, whatever, it, whether you're hitched up to a vehicle that's slightly too high for the trailer or slightly too low, um, all four wheels always stay in contact with the road. And what that means is you get optimal braking efficiency. You never run the risk of overloading your front and rear axle. And you also reduce the risk of damage to your wheels, tires and axles. So again, just giving you that peace of mind that the trailer's out there and it's, a, it's an asset that's going to keep earning you money and reduce the downtime. Now, obviously, a trailer represents an investment and anybody making that investment will want to know that their new trailer is well and truly looked after. So what support have you put in place? So we're backing this product with a three year warranty. Um, the product's been developed from the ground up. It's been tested. It's built on tried and tested products, components. Um, and we've got every bit of faith that this trailer will do what it's meant to do. And that's why we're backing it. We're giving it a three year warranty, which is a full three year warranty. And it's not just chassis only, it's chassis and all components. Now it's noticeable that your new trailer is just a little bit longer than a standard one. Is that a reflection on modern working methods with people requiring more buckets and attachments? Yeah, you're right. It's, um, it is, it's 2.8 metres long by 1.3 metres wide. Um, and, you know, the typical 8x4 trailer, which has been very commonly used in the past, um, if people always struggle to fit their buckets in. Um, so they end up having to find space for them elsewhere uh, or not be able to carry them at all. So just with that slightly um, increase in length uh, from 2.5 metres to 2.8, effectively gaining another foot, um, that gives you the space to store your bucket safely. And what we've done is we've actually incorporated a demountable bucket locker within that space. So that then enables you to be able to keep the bucket secure. 
so they can't be pinched while maybe the trailer is parked up overnight or even parked down the road on a job. And we hear from time to time of um, contractors having things pinched off the trailer whilst they're actually doing their work, which is obviously not great. Um, but because it's demountable, if you ever need to create extra space or you need to adjust the position where the digger sits, you've got that ability. You can literally just take the take the locker out. Um, it still means that your buckets um, remain secure because it's locked um, in its uh, independently of the trailer, um, and you can then store them like that in the yard. So you've got almost the multiple benefits from these uh, for some of these attachments um, even then you know your requirements might change um, and to ensure that your trailer stays relevant for the job you want it to um, other parts of the trailer uh, can be removed um, and can be fitted afterwards or it may be you buy the trailer in one format but you want to upgrade it to another um, that's possible as well so you've got your basic version and your super duper version but where do you go from here well, it's been a very exciting job and to be honest, this has been two years worth of research and development and, and a, a fairly large investment for us. Um, and, it, and it's really been the foundation, if you like, of a much bigger range of trailers that we're hoping to bring along soon. So what I'd say is watch this space. Um, in the next few months, we'll be launching more models, uh, different types of applications. Um, so keep keep an eye out for that. Um, it's very much part of, um, I guess, our overarching brand of, uh, of wanting to be uh, an all-encompassing supplier. So we're not just parts anymore. We've got that experience. We've um, we've been we're good at that that part of the business, and now we want to move into the trailer um, products. And, and bring that expertise that we've gained through being a parts distributor into building these trailers. And it's really, um, to be honest, the responses we've had have been phenomenal. Um, but what I would say is it's really thanks to our customers in terms of wanting to buy in to providing feedback so that we can actually create something that they want. Um, and, that, and that is really the underlying part of it. And it's, it's a fundamental part of our business. Um, that Our number one core value is being customer led. Um, and that's really, you know, that follows through in everything we do. Final question, I guess, and I probably should have asked it earlier. What is the trailer called and where can people find out more? What's it called? Well, it's the Rhino TXDP-27 uh, trailer is, is what we're uh, launching at the moment. That's uh, rated at 2.7 tonnes. Um, the product is available uh, from ourselves. Uh, you can contact Glenn, who is our National Trailer Sales Manager. Um, on glenn at ate-uk.com you can phone us on 01206 795 949 um, and if you really want to put the the beast if you like to the test um, we're more than happy to bring the trailer to you to arrange a demonstration um, so you can try it for yourself and and the proof is in the eating we find ourselves living in strange times right now traditional exhibitions and product launches are obviously a no-no so if you'd like to get your product in front of as many people as you possibly can, speak to us here at Diggers and Dozers. As you've seen from the previous video, we can help you do that. We've got a huge audience on social media, including more than 230,000 over on Instagram. So let us use our leverage and our reach to help you launch your products.